Over a year ago, I posted one of my very first videos, expressing my hopes for a Gen 8 Pokemon game. And if you haven't seen that video, you're doing yourself a favor. Please, do not watch that video. It's old, I didn't know what I was doing, and I kinda absolutely hate it. It really deserves to be buried with all the unsold copies of E.T. for the Atari 2600. So Sword and Shield have been kinda controversial lately, and it seems everyone has been throwing their hat into the ring. Many are angry at Game Freak, others are defending them, and then there's me. I've just been watching all the madness unfold. I honestly don't care too much about cutting the national decks, or the fact that the games don't look visually as good as they possibly could in some distant utopian reality. But with that being said, there are definitely ways Pokemon can improve. You know that old meme with all the iconic characters growing up, and then there's Ash who just refuses to get any older? Yeah, that's basically what I feel is going on with Pokemon right now. And let me reassure you that I don't think Sword and Shield look bad. They look like fine games. But that's also kind of the problem. They look like fine games, not incredible ones. You'd think the Pokemon company would be putting more into their big new product, especially since, you know, Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise in the world. To put it in perspective, Pokemon has made more money than the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Harry Potter, and Dragon Ball combined. All three of those franchises, none of which are at their core video game franchises, have big budget games coming out soon that seem to be pushing the boundaries of their respective genres. Okay, I know the open world Harry Potter game hasn't technically been officially confirmed yet, but there's enough leaked screenshots and other information that it's definitely happening. And if the game is even half as good as it looks in these screenshots, we're definitely in for a treat. The point I'm trying to make is that while Pokemon Sword and Shield look good, I feel they could be way more. So here's my thoughts on the top 10 ways Pokemon Sword and Shield could be improved. An improved opening cinematic. Pokemon games have always had opening cinematics to give the player a taste of what they're about to experience. And we've definitely come a long way since. Recent Pokemon opening cinematics were mainly just game clips, with a few in-game cutscenes sprinkled in for good measures. But I think Pokemon deserves something a bit grander. If you've seen my previous video on Pokemon theme songs, you know I'm a sucker for original animation and openings, and this case is no different. Pokemon produced fully animated teasers for Black and White 2, Auris, and just recently Pokemon Masters. They could make another teaser like this and have it double as an opening, or just reuse some of the clips. And I know it's tradition for Pokemon's main theme to play during the opening cinematic, but I think it may be time for something new. Like, maybe a brand new song with vocals that we can all listen to a hundred times. If Smash Bros, Fire Emblem, and Astral Chain can get that kind of treatment, then Pokemon definitely should as well. Difficulty settings. Let's talk numbers for a second. The gaming landscape has definitely changed since the beginning of Pokemon, as there are so many more games coming out now than there were 20 years ago. $60 has been the standard for AAA console quality games since the mid-90s, yet when you add in inflation, a game that was $60 in 1999 would cost over $90 today. Yet major games have stuck with that $60 price point in order to stay competitive. And with the rise of smaller indie and free-to-play games, it's clear that gaming is becoming less and less of an expensive hobby. Well, I guess free-to-play games could end up costing thousands for some people, but that's beyond the point. For many kids, if a game is too hard or stumps them in any way, they'll just quit and play something else, a luxury that much fewer people had back in the day. So it does kind of make sense that games would start getting easier, but there is a pretty simple solution to this for all of us who want some kind of challenge. Pokemon has only ever dabbled in difficulty settings in Black and White 2, but it was only available after beating the champion, so that wasn't very helpful. I don't think Pokemon will ever get a lunatic mode, as cool as that would be, but I'll never stop dreaming. The mechanics of Pokemon are actually super deep. I mean, there's an entire competitive scene, yet the main story never requires the player to learn any of it. So many of the NPCs Pokemon have zero IVs in every stat, which technically shouldn't even be possible. The more I talk about it, the clearer it gets. Pokemon needs difficulty settings. More cinematic battles. A game's graphics have never been that important to me. I've always cared more about the story, characters, and of course gameplay. An example of this mindset would be when a friend asked me why anyone would want to play Skyrim on the Switch. And I replied with, why would anyone want to play Skyrim on anything other than the Switch? Sure, it doesn't look as good graphically, but with a massive game like Skyrim, I definitely want to be able to take it places. That's honestly why I still haven't played Persona 5. Like, I own a PS3, but I just can't justify buying a 100-hour game when I'd be limited to playing it at home and on a TV. And it seems Atlas is willing to put Persona 5 on Switch in every way except porting over the actual game. But back to Pokemon, Game Freak's animations have always required a little bit of imagination. Now, this may sound a bit cynical, but I don't think Game Freak should be in charge of animations anymore. We've seen Pokemon battles look way better when other studios were in charge. I mean, just look at these. Bam! Quick attack! Yeah! It's a hit! And it's down! How 
Colosseum is tense. Bam! Taken down by an intense blow. So yeah, we have the Pokemon wandering about the field. We call them kind of symbol encounters where you can see- Masuda claimed that cutting the national decks would allow for better animations, and I would be all for that decision, but these animations are basically repeating Gen 7, which already reused animations from Gen 6. You see the problem here? And I know I said graphics aren't important to me, but that is one ugly tree. Look Game Freak, I don't care if the games aren't as crispy as they could be, but please, for the love of god, just fix that tree. A more lively world. This one Pokemon has actually been doing decently well, with wild Pokemon appearing in the overworld now. But I can't help but feel that there's so much more that could be done, such as trainers walking around and being more active, or being able to send out your Pokemon to interact with the world more than just cutting bushes. And some more unique looking trainers would be nice, instead of just the same copy-paste 10 trainer classes. When I play a game that takes place in the world of Pokemon, I want it to truly feel like I'm in a Pokemon world, sort of like what we saw in Detective Pikachu. And who knows, maybe you could even use your fire types to burn ugly trees. Voice acting. Okay, let me make one thing clear. I want real quality voice acting, not just half-assing it and taking the first cut. But where is Dr. Wiley? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wiley. Voice acting is slowly becoming standard for AAA games, and I'd love to see Pokemon get in on it. Breath of the Wild had voice acted cutscenes, and the entirety of Fire Emblem Three Houses was voice acted. I'd love it if the characters in Pokemon games could be as expressive as they are in the anime. And with voice acting, there is another thing I think they should add. 2D animated cutscenes. Going back to the animated teasers, it would be awesome if we could get something like this in-game. Pokemon games nowadays have cutscenes, but I think a 2D art style would really help stylize the games, making them feel less like generic RPGs and more like the world and characters popped right out of an anime. A game like Persona 5 mixes its 2D and 3D visuals, giving it extra pizzazz. Man, I really need to play Persona 5. Pokemon could easily accomplish the same thing, and the first logical step would be adding 2D cutscenes. This would also help calm the complaints over Pokemon's 3D visuals looking rushed or dated. Sun and Moon had more cutscenes than any games prior, and I'd love to see them with voice acting and gorgeous 2D animation. A fully customizable main character. You know what I really don't like about recent Pokemon games? The fact that I have to keep looking at this blank expressionless face. This wasn't a problem when the games used pixel art, but up in the graphics to 3D models has shown just how lifeless these characters are. Occasionally you'll get like two speech options, but it never matters which one you pick. And sometimes there's virtually no difference between the two options. I'd love to have a multitude of speech options, allowing the player to express whatever personality he or she wants onto the protagonist. Similar to Katana Zero, in which the main character's personality is whatever the player decides to make it. And if we're talking about personalizing the main character, there needs to be more appearance customization. In Sun and Moon, you could choose between four skin tones, nine hair colors, a small variety of hairstyles and clothes, and that's it. No eye color, no adjusting height or weight, and no additional facial features. Modern games that feature a customizable main character tend to really make sure the player has complete control. Just look at Astral Chain. While the protagonist has a base design similar to Pokemon's protagonist, the depth of face and hair customization puts Pokemon to shame. However, I feel Pokemon would not have to do any of this if they were to change one major aspect of the protagonist. A fleshed out main character. This may sound a bit odd, but I tend to find customizable main characters a bit of a turnoff for games. The more customizable a character is, the more likely they are to be completely void of any personality. Some of my all-time favorite games are those where the playable character is an actual important character in the story, such as Celeste, Forgotten Anne, and Bayonetta. The game's story could be vastly improved if the main character could, you know, actually speak full sentences. The Pokemon franchise has always had a history of allowing certain supporting characters to grow and develop, but not allowing the same for their main character. However, the Pokemon XY anime showed actual growth in Ash's character, and I would love if the character and Force to play as could see a similar type of emotional development. Fleshed out side quests. Pokemon games have always had very simplistic stories. 
earn all eight gym badges, or in Sun and Moon's case beat all the trials, defeat an evil team, and become the champion. Rinse and repeat for 23 years, and that formula is surely not going to start feeling stale. While I would love a deeper and much more unique main story, Pokemon could easily remedy this by adding more meaningful side quests. And I don't mean perform a simple task and get rewarded with an item, I want big side quests that make up for the simplistic story. Remember the Delta episode postgame from Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire? I would love if that would become the norm for side quests, offering a deeper gameplay experience for those who are interested. Breath of the Wild has a very straightforward and simplistic story, defeat all four divine beasts and take on the Calamity Ganon. However, the game expands the simple premise into an adventure by offering countless things to do, from completing shrines to meeting all sorts of interesting characters. It's for this reason that I feel Breath of the Wild is viewed as such a massive game, despite having a simple and even kind of generic story. And who knows, maybe a Pokemon game will actually one day be nominated for Game of the Year. And the number one thing I feel would improve Pokemon Sword and Shield is... Travel Companions. I'm sick of being completely on my own in Pokemon games, with other characters popping up only when it's necessary for the story to progress. Pokemon is home to so many interesting and unique characters, but many only appear a few times total. Let me recruit other trainers to travel with and fight alongside my character, just like in the anime. I'm not saying I want the entire cast following me at once, that would be kinda creepy, but just two or three characters that I can choose to recruit. What if after beating a gym leader, you could add them and their Pokemon to your party? Or maybe you could build bonds with characters in order to recruit them, like how it works in Fire Emblem. This could also allow for local multiplayer, just how you could have a friend travel alongside you and let's go. They would have to modify the entire game to work alongside this mechanic, so it's unlikely, but would be so awesome. Basically, I want Pokemon Masters to be turned into a main series game. Is that really too much to ask for? And there you have it, my thoughts on how Pokemon Sword and Shield could be improved. The game is still a few months away, and things could change. And despite all the controversy, I'm becoming more and more excited to play this new generation of Pokemon with each passing day. Personally, I'll be picking up Pokemon Shield, mainly because Rising of the Shield Hero was one of my favorite shows in recent memory. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you're pumped to play Sword and Shield, or if that tree physically hurts you. And that's another video done. Please let me know if you like this new style, and I've got some cool ideas for new Pokemon videos in the near future. Anyway, I've got some questions from Ads XYZ to answer on this end card. First one is, do you watch Naruto? And I have actually never watched Naruto. Next we've got, what's my favorite character and quirk from My Hero Academia? My favorite character is either Todoroki or Araka, and my favorite quirk is probably Half Hot Half Cold. And finally, what do I use to edit videos? Uh, for this entire channel's history, I've used Final Cut Pro. Actually, going back to the Naruto question, I own a Naruto GameCube game. Hold on, let me find it. Yeah, it's Naruto Clash of Ninja from Tomy. I didn't know they published games. And I've never actually played it, but the box art is cool. 